And now, it's time for the Microsoft Encarta Library that wished on a star and magically became a real video game. <laughs> it's Virtual Hotline with Geyer. <laughs> All right, so I am turning the Saturn on now because it does impact the RNG a little bit for the startup here. So I want to be not letting it think too long about what it's about to do to us here. <laughs> <sighs> Man, Virtual Highlight. This is such a really, really fun game to run. Um, I'm Jire. Let me have the couch go ahead and give their introductions. Uh, Mike Uyama, Poexel, Dragon Dark. And uh, they are not prepared for what's about to happen to them. Neither is anybody in the audience here today. Uh, <laughs> So let me ask the audience here, who here thinks the 60 frames per second is too much? <laughs> uh, so so uh, to the stream, I have to make a, a warning. So you might think that the stream is dying or something's wrong with the stream. It, that's likely not the case. Uh, this case, you, you'll this see, game you'll can see. be best measured in seconds per frame. Mm -hmm. SPF. It's not SPF is not just for uh, skin protection anymore. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so this is not actually a password. This is a seed code that I'm doing. And by the way, you can still start the timer whenever you want. This is Virtual Hideline. It doesn't care. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the first thing we're going to be introduced to is our hero, Jim. It really is his name, so we are not making this up. Jim the Knight is our main protagonist. He is a <laughs> swell <laughs> dude here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> Give him that stretch, Jim. Yeah. One thing I really love about Jim is that he's got some very, very black boots, and that's pretty much his biggest fashion sense. This is what the sprinting is like. Um, and get used to this, because this is the good part of the game. Uh, first of all, we're going to take a teleporter system that's been ripped straight out of Draken, which allows you to do some fast travel around the map. Mm -hmm. So that's why you put me on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to do the first quest here, which is the fairy forest. There are 15 trees here that contain bees, one that contains fairy. You don't want the bees, but this is what happens if you get the bees. Oh, no. Oh. The bees. Fight the bees, Jim. Oh, no. Jim's dead. <laughs> so this is basically what happens to you in Hydelide pretty much all the time. Um, but fortunately, in case you do have any accidents, this is a game that allows you to put some more quarters into the Saturn, and so we can go ahead and get a continue on this one. <laughs> I'm, I'm not really sure. Somebody asked if we really want to go on, and the answer is no, but we, are, we have been paid money in order to show you 101% of the game, which is not only going to do all the quests, but also show off Jim's best outfit and even do the mine carts, which I feel the mine carts, perhaps the best mine carts in video game history. So that is definitely the highlight here. I'm going to finish this quest off. This is the fairy forest. That is the fairy phone. We have answered the fairy phone, and it is time to move on to our next destination, which is going to be the graveyard here. <laughs> So uh, it's actually part of the game's plot that you're supposed to collect three fairies to unlock the where, to unlock the route to Vir Viralis. So there's no actual plot in the game itself. Um, this is a remake of the NES Hydelide, and you're really expected to have played that game to know what's going on. Uh, but to give you the quick summary, the princess has been torn into three pieces by Viralis. The three pieces became fairies, and you need the fairies plus the magic duct tape to put her back together and <laughs> save the universe here. And Jim, unfortunately, is the only person left in Fairyland, so he is, well, he's not the hero that we need, but he is the hero you guys all deserve. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to break the grave from behind. I don't know why that works. Um, this is the uh, quest for this graveyard. This is the crucifix item I'm picking up. Uh, everything's in Japanese because it's the Japanese version, but there is no NPCs or dialogue of any kind whatsoever. So you're really not missing out on much. It doesn't even tell you what the items are. Um, it'll just give you a generic class of this is like a piece of equipment or something really useless like that because it's a randomizer. And so you were meant to just try things out and explore and see what happens. But unfortunately, like 90% of the items are either junk or cursed. So it is really, really painful to do this game when you don't know what you are doing or what's going on, which is pretty much anyone that has ever touched this. <laughs> now, I'm not doing the quest in quite the order that the game recommends. Let me get rid of my starter equipment here and head off to an area known as the Trial Dungeon. Now, you're not supposed to go here until you've got a light source, but I really like this place because in the dark, we can't see what's going on. And less virtual high light, in my opinion, is probably for the best. Now, while I'm running over there, Lindsay, can you give us some quick donations and see how things are sure. going? Uh, <laughs> we have $25 from Avon Chaos. 
Jire, you are directly responsible for my involvement and contributions to the speedrunning community. Please never play this game again. <laughs> <laughs> Until next year. I, I will stop, Evan, if you get 3.30 in Final Fantasy. That is Ooh. 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 Actually, I won't stop. You just have to do it anyway. Instead of us go to, <laughs> instead of us go to runner's choice, uh, let's go for a W Fest because that is an amazing yeah. way to play. Yeah, yeah. Fudge. I approve of this. It's Never forget the only me. way to play trio. <laughs> we also have two hundred fifty dollars from the Trash Man. He says, "So when do I pick up all this garbage?" <laughs> <laughs> All right, so into the trial dungeon we go. Now, you're supposed to have light source, so instead we're just going to have some very, very deep blackness here. And this is going to introduce a new mechanic, which is map turns. So the game runs so slowly that it is faster to go into the menu, turn around, and then come back out than it is to turn in the overworld. And you'll see me use this pretty frequently throughout. Certainly any time that you've got more than, like, 90 degrees of turning, you want to be probably in that menu back and forth. It's just something where the menu actually runs at a pretty stable 15 frames per second, and the game just doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is this was a cutting edge 3D game on a on hardware that doesn't really deal with 3D very well. Yeah, that was a weird thing that they went for 3D. The Saturn does not have real 3D processing. Yeah, and this is something that comes up in some other games. You may have seen Symphony of the Night. Um, which is another game which doesn't look 3D but actually has a bunch of 3D particle effects or the, the light sources in like Mega Man 8. The Saturn just doesn't have some of the hardware that other systems do, but most of those other games were ports. And you can understand that they made it for PlayStation first. I can't imagine Virtual Hide Light had any intention of ever becoming a multi-platform title. So this was evidently their best effort when it came to uh, video game development here. Go ahead, grab the Dragon Shield, and I'm also going to grab the Lens of Truth, which is totally ripped off of Ocarina of Time. <laughs> it's been a, a theme throughout the history of Hydlide that it has a lot of Zelda-seeming influences, such as the uh, Master Sword, which we will be uh, seeing later, and also another sword which looks similar to the Master Sword, but is officially not from the Zelda universe at all. I say official because it probably was. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to head on back out of here. So you've seen this part before. Let's go ahead and get a couple more donations in as I run across here. All right, we have a $20 donation from Raving Sock Monkey. Uh, back in November, I lost my job, and Jire's streams and VODs helped me through those tough couple of months. Tuesday, I got a new one, so I wanted to donate during Virtual Highlight to say thank you. Also, I vote sheep. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to the end. There's a, a bit of controversy at the end of the game, whether the stock photography which is all it has for the credits, is actually depicting cows or sheep. I've got, I've got a lot of debate that goes on for that, but you'll get a chance to do your own voting once we get there. I'm almost out of here. I'm surprised that Jim's spleen has remained relatively undestroyed <laughs> as I go across this. You can hear these whiffs going across there, and let's see if we can find where the exit is. Oh, that was actually really fast. It's a black tile in a black room with lots of blackness around it, and so... Everything in this game is quite difficult to activate, but especially anything that you do want to touch. <laughs> so speaking of Mike, <laughs> I hear that you have picked up a highlight game of your own. Uh, yes, uh, I have played and beaten Super Highlight, which is why I'm on this couch, <laughs> which is actually a Genesis game, and it looks like a really hideous-looking 8-bit NES game. <laughs> Super Highlight is the one where they go into space, and then they come back and they have swords again. Yeah, you can't deny the light the Highlight. You cannot. All right, so we're running over here to our next area, which is going to be the Vampire Mansion. I've run out most of the game for the seed to kind of minimize your overworld travel. And that's why I'm doing the quest slightly out of order. So I'm trying to avoid these kind of crisscrossing, meandering trails back and around. But it's, it's as a randomized game, you're going to have some places where you're going to have to do a trip across here. And you're also going to have some dungeons as well that you have to kind of pick and choose which you think are the most important. And as we near here, the, the Vampire Mansion has got a quest to touch the vampire's balls. And the vampire has, uh, for some reason, five balls. I've never quite figured out how he got that many. Uh, but we do have to touch all of them in here, so it is a set seed. I know where his balls are. That's going to let us save a lot of time throughout this. Uh, but here we go. Hopefully we get all of these first try. Also, this is where the game slightly starts slowing down a little bit, so don't be alarmed. Just a little. If it looks like you're <laughs> 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 Oh. <laughs> 
This is the good part of the dimension. All right, ball number one. Uh. You're distracting Jim, everybody. Touched. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Up and around we go. So the iron armor that I picked up back at the graveyard, that's going to make me bat-proof. It's actually iron armor, not aluminum foil, as you may have guessed. I oh. personally thought it was tin foil. There's that zombie spawning in. I like the animation. You guys are really good at this. Keep it up. Yes. We got three more to go. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm sure the vampire is enjoying every single one of these touches as well. All right, number three. Now we have the actual slowdown. I was just preparing you for it. You haven't seen the slowdown yet for the vampire mansion. All right, up around this turn. Jim is trying as hard as he can. Nope, Jim, in the corner. <laughs> this is why you use the map, just because you get lost, right? You just made up that excuse about turning back. <laughs> And then one more to go. That's the clock boss coming up there. The clock boss is one of the most dangerous foes in Virtual Highlight. You'll see if I'm able to dodge him on the way back. And number five here. Hopefully we have appeased the vampire, and hopefully we have appeased clock boss to get by here. <laughs> no, the clock boss got me. All right, <laughs> up and around we go. So this is going to be our Jim. Jim. <laughs> this is going to be our first real boss fight, real, a real any fight of any kind. You actually don't want to fight any monsters mm -hmm. because it doesn't do anything in the game. Um, all you get is points, and you get like 10 or 20 points at a time. I have no idea what he's saying. <laughs> <laughs> and the trick of the vampire, he's got two moves, short teleport and long teleport. So every time he short teleport, I move slightly forward to match him, and then he never gets the long teleport because he can just keep him still locked, and that's the vampire. <laughs> Jim's action pose right now. This is Jim's signature pose in life. <laughs> This is how you recover health in the game. Three hit points per second standing here. So it takes five minutes to regen your health at the end of the game. Um, <laughs> that was the only way, really, that you could regenerate in NES Hideline, which made that game an extremely, extremely painful speedrun if you were not immensely talented at it. Still thinking about the vampire boss. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> It, it just takes the time to realize what's going on. So there's the shield we picked up, the lens of truth, and the magic lamp. Sadly, we didn't get the super magic lamp. There is a rare version of that quest item. So like maybe about 5% of the time you'll get the super magic lamp. They both have the same light radius, but the super magic lamp weighs more. That's the only difference. And this game, there's actually a carrying capacity. That's one of the things that I'm doing by getting these quests, is leveling up to increase my carrying capacity so I can actually wield weapons and armor. So if you get the rare item, you actually aren't able to use as much equipment. Um, I've routed this out just in case I got the Super Magic Lamp, I'd be okay. But it's really weird that they have a penalty for getting the, the Super Rare one. All right, so there is Vampire Mansion down. We're going to go over to the ruins next. And you might think that everything in this game is a ruin, and you are correct. But this place is more <laughs> ruined than the rest of it. All right, Jim, Jim's having some... All right. Nope, there we go. Jim was just stuck on the pillar. He gets a little bit attached to some of these walls sometimes. It's okay. He's going to get over it pretty soon here. And as I run over here, let's get one more quick donation in before I have to show off these ruins. All right. We have a $25 donation from Linalia. You know the whole save the frames versus save the animals thing from the Super Metroid run? Virtual Highlight is very, very concerned with saving the frames. It doesn't want any more <laughs> frames than it absolutely needs. <laughs> this game has shown me the error of my ways. It's only save the animals from here on out. Wait until you see the best part of it. We've got that coming up in just one more dungeon after this. So ruins here, we're going to see the most map turns because it is more or less a maze which has a bunch of these floor traps. The floor traps, about half of your health taken off in one frame. So you have a few seconds to get by them before you're completely dead. You can hear it kind of whooshing behind me as I go across here. <laughs> I'm going to try not to do as many turns because you can do a lot of slides in this one. If you're trying to go back and forth between different directions, you can every once in a while, these little electric slides that uh, he does, a little bit maybe an MC Hammer slide as well, depending on what era that you want to uh, associate with. Those are going to be a little bit faster than having to go back and forth into those uh, menus here. As long as I'm lined up, and there we go. Really important to be straight going through that hallway, otherwise you're going to get caught in those floor traps, and there's a roper coming at me. You wouldn't really know most of these monsters unless, again, you've played NES Hydlide. And got a long sword there. You did donate for 101%, so I'm gonna get the best armor in the game. There's the fairy mail. We'll get the fairy shield to complement that in a second. All right, Jim, he's gonna have to get through this. 
There we go. All right, we have our trusty magic sword here, which does fix poison, so I don't have to carry antidotes around. And into this area here. So the only reason I can get through these, or at least see where the passageways are, is because I got the Lens of Truth on. You can actually go right through them if you just run at it really hard and then wiggle back and forth. <laughs> Game's kind of got its own interpretation of walls. All right, I just picked up the Flame Pennant, which is a required quest item to get through the volcano, and volcano is where we are about to be headed. I will caution people that if you are sensitive to motion sickness, really any kind of illness of any any sort, you might want to look away during the volcano. <laughs> it is truly where virtual hide light gets a little bit rough. I have bad game sickness. Does that count? No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Lighting up here so I don't get caught in a floor trap coming up. There we go, past that one. One more floor trap to go, and then we are safe. Well, we're not really safe playing virtual hide light, but we're out of the dungeon at least. And there we go, through the ruins. And. <laughs> if you're feeling a little bit queasy, this is okay. It's perfectly natural. But I will warn you, you have about two minutes. So I'm going to do a quick shopping trip. Uh, the way they implemented shopping is because there's no NPCs, you just go into a menu and it's at one specific spot in the game. So I have to go run there and set it up. Um, and so in the meantime, we have probably time for about two or three donations, Lindsay, and then, uh, and then everyone must be prepared for that volcano coming up. <laughs> no, please, Jared. No one's prepared for that. <laughs> uh, we have a $100 donation from Pandy Bird. Donating during virtual hide light because I feel so bad for you and everyone that has to watch this. <laughs> My eyes are bleeding. Oh, God. Thank you for playing this awful game. More garbage! <laughs> we have a $50 donation from Pythonicus. I knew I was going to donate this year, but I wasn't sure when to do it until I saw the masterpiece that is virtual hide light. Such a glorious flaming trash pile atop a train wreck. Thanks, Jire, for suffering through this so we don't have to. Oh, you have to suffer through this as well. It's not optional. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it coming, Lindsay. All right, we have $50 from Duke. How could I not donate during Virtual Hydlide, my favorite Windows 95 screensaver? <laughs> <laughs> love the awful block and love that this is for a great cause. I'm pretty sure I did have a screensaver that looked like those ruins. I think all my screensavers move faster than this does. All right, so I'm going to go into the menu here. So we're doing a little bit of shopping for the rest of the game. Um, for this round, I go through a uh, single shopping menu just to consolidate everything. I'm going to get some fairy tears, a detect scroll, some insanity potions. You need a lot of those when you're playing virtual hide light, and some stamina potions. And there we go. All right, so shopping complete. I'll explain what those items do as we get to their various points of the game. But this is the volcano coming up, and it is going to be amazing. So again. Don't feel bad if you do have to tap out at any point during this. It is truly a very, very special experience. And also, we're going to get our next <laughs> accessory that we need for 101%. That's going to be the flame sword coming up here in a second. Well, a couple minutes. It's several frames away. That's the best I can give you. All right. All right. Have we explained what 100% and 101% mean in this game yet? 100% is doing all the quests. Um, every time you hear a jingle, that's one of the quests. 101% is just doing everything that's amazing that yeah. this game has to offer. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> this is definitely one of those things that is quite amazing. Uh, it's worth mentioning that his score is so low now because the shop actually uses your score. You don't have money in this game. <laughs> oh, baby. <laughs> this is the point in the game where we start measuring everything in seconds per frame. <laughs> You definitely want to map turn anything that's more than one degree in this one. <laughs> this is when Sega doesn't have the blast processing of the Genesis. <laughs> <laughs> We're almost to where the first turn is. <laughs> Jim's stuck in a chest. All right, there we go. Flame sword acquired. <laughs> The tricky part about this is that you might have a turn you need to make, but it's in between frames, so everything is subframe perfect for your movement. <laughs> Got a lot of this timed out, so it's like, here's a hallway that's about, you know, 100,000 feet where 
you're going to be turning, and then that's about one frame that you need to be reacting. And luckily, all the monsters can't see me because they are not uh, able to move more than one frame per second either. Uh, I see you're running past all these monsters <laughs> instead of fighting them. Isn't that going to hurt you for being able to afford to buy stuff with points? Yeah, the funny thing is the monsters give you about 10 or 20 points, and quests give you about 100,000, which is the average item price. So you have uh, almost no point whatsoever. You could grind for like two or three hours and then ex be able to afford like a pair of shoes or something. I wouldn't really recommend, though, any type of grinding in this game. We're almost... We're almost to the second turn. <laughs> 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 you can do it. Jim may not be able to do it, but you can. <laughs> Live on in Jim's sake. <laughs> So, would you say it's easy to do frame-perfect tricks in this game? Because you have about 10 <laughs> seconds to do them. I would say all inputs in this game are frame-perfect. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> I have not missed a frame yet. <laughs> but I'm still counting the frames out as we go. We're up to seven. Okay. <laughs> do you think you'll beat the RPG Limit Break estimate of 23 frames? That is a tough one. That was a really good run. So, RPG Limit Break, we did do virtual highlight back in May, and some people have recovered since then. <laughs> Not all, but some. Mm -hmm. Dragon Dog was safe. He was unable to make it. But Poexel and uh, Mikey, I actually have seen this in person before, and I'm not sure how they're able to be on this couch now, given that uh, that terrible, terrible fate that's beheld them. Oh, please. I've watched you do practice before. I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> all right, there you go. That's the photo necklace. I'll need that for some glitches later on. Also really helpful for speeding up some of the late-game bosses. Speaking of, of speed-ups, uh, that long sword that I got back in the ruins actually saves you about four minutes on this upcoming boss. It is like two pixels longer than a regular sword, but that's enough to save you many, many cycles of this guy going back and forth. He is, well, he's three bosses that's just taped together. They all have their own life bar, and he starts really, really far away from you, and he moves really, really slowly. So the more hits you can get in per cycle, without the long sword, it's impossible to one cycle him. Yeah. Long Start sometimes needs two cycles, but it's usually much, much faster. We're still yeah. waiting for him to move forward. I mean, say what you will about this game, it doesn't lie to you. The Long Sword is long. It is like the one thing in the game that functions properly, and I was <laughs> shocked by it. I played this for three years before realizing the Long Sword was actually longer than the rest of the swords. It was a revelation in uh, virtual highlight speedrunning technology when that happened. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. We're in range of Long Sword. Still be like another minute or so if we get him with a regular sword. <laughs> All right, he's probably regular sword range, so I can keep all three heads still locked now. Long sword, unfortunately, the pokey attack only hits two at a time. Not quite as wide in exchange for being longer. And here we go, last head coming up. Don't move back, don't move back. He's moving back. You can do this, Jim. It's so close. Oh, there's a critical. There we go, we got him. Oh! Yay! Yay! Whew. All right. Dragon is down. <laughs> Now, the good news is we don't have to walk back out of the volcano. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I used to buy an item to warp back, and that's actually what you do in the, the fast stretch for it. Before the uh, marathon route, what I'm going to do is instead death warp out. This is what would happen if you didn't have the item equipped that you got back in the ruins. It's kind of a brutal death that uh, Jim would experience otherwise than have color. There he goes. <laughs> <laughs> Charcoal, Jim. So would you say that now that we're only going to lose about 10,000 viewers instead of 20,000 viewers because you saved them the motion sickness? Now you can turn the stream back on if you've had it off. So it is, well, almost safe. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to go back to the start. So uh, death warping there just takes you back to the dungeon that you're in if you're in a dungeon. On overworld, just respawn where you were um, leaving off. And the true cost, the thing that hurts you the most, is that it does take away all of your points. So sadly, we cannot get a high score when we are doing the death warps in here. And there we go. This, for some reason, lets you walk backwards out of the volcano. No other door in the game functions like that. Everything else requires that you <laughs> facing it. I don't know why this one is different. It's just virtual highlight. I'm okay with that being the answer. <laughs> it's the answer to a lot of things that happen in this game. Now, uh, it may have looked like I picked up a pot on the way out of there. That's actually a uh, flute. So. We now have the musical instrument to soothe the savage doorknob that we need to uh, get into the sealed dungeon coming up. And immediately when you come out of there, even though this is back to its normal eight frames per second, it looks so buttery smooth. <laughs> Jim is just gliding along 
As if he's got not a care in the world. Also, I think the fairy armor is some component of that as well. <laughs> let's line up here with the bridge. There we go. No, stuck on the bridge. Try again, Jim. No. Oh. Oh. No. Oh. 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 No. Oh. Come on. On. There we go. Jim just has some some troubles. He's trying his best. And his best is not quite good enough, but we love him anyway. We have a $10 donation from Squint in reference to Jim's wonderful running animation. Ah, uh, Mom! <laughs> Mom, they took my backpack! <laughs> <laughs> we have a $50 donation from Eronth. Says it's nice to be able to look away from a game and then look back and not miss a single frame. <laughs> <laughs> and we also have a $10 donation from RB who says, How much is the donation incentive to stop the run? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm going to race the music in here. There's a glitch that causes the music to not load in for, I think, four frames. And so I can get most of the way down this hallway as we go through here. Oh, that's not a bad one. There we go. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I checked another virtual highlight just in case it was my copy. Um, I do have more than one copy of virtual highlight here at Austin Games Think Quick. If anybody would like to try this game out. <laughs> Who here would like to try this game out? <laughs> we will get what, you set up. What, what, what's wrong with you people? <laughs> what's wrong with them is not enough virtual highlight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what's right with you people? <laughs> They're fine connoisseurs of frames. <laughs> <laughs> they want to savor each one. Yes. And this game lets them do just that. <laughs> Music in here is so intense. Now, this is going to be the section where we do have the minecarts, and I feel like these are the best minecarts mm -hmm. in video game history. You had the minecarts in Super Mario RPG. You had the minecarts of Donkey Kong country and tropical freeze, but none of them compared to the minecart yeah. awesomeness of virtual high Mine Minecarts and Final Fantasy VI were in, wish they were uh, these. <laughs> Puex will know. He is the minecart official now. Jim is trying to get to the minecart right now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You can do it, Jim. Come we on, believe, come on. We believe in you, Jim. Oh, minecart clip. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. There yeah. we go. Yeah. I was hoping Jim might accidentally clip into the ceiling, which does happen every once in a while, but we have two more <laughs> minecarts to try it on. Yes. And these this, these extra minecarts are happening because of you donating to make it happen. Yes, 101% does involve all the minecart trips you can imagine. The minecarts, they are the best part of Virtual Highlight. They, they don't quite have wheels, but other than that, they are the idealized minecart yeah, of your dreams. Or, fu or functional uh, load limits. <sighs> they, they use super advanced magnets to stay on the track. <laughs> There is a sign next to the minecart which says there's a five kilogram load limit, and that's like ridiculously light. You could barely carry a dagger through there, but uh, it is not actually implemented in the game. You just have to use your imagination to make sure that you're not cheating. And I, I did make sure I took off all of my gear to make sure I was under that requirement. We do, of course, play legit here at Awesome Games Think Quick in all of our adventures. Jim's trying to get around the corner there. All right, I think I see. I do see another elevator coming up here. All right, it is time for a quick donation or two as we get closer to the mage here. Because once we're into that mage battle, it is going to be a tense and action-packed battle, and I can't have any interruptions. All right, well, we have a $50 donation from... We have a $50 donation from... We have a $50 <laughs> donation from... <laughs> <laughs> Donation Fractal, I like it. We have an anonymous $100 donation. The primate that makes everything worse checking in to say, trash for the trash block! <laughs> We're edging up onto that W fist mode for Trio the Punch. We're at $3,577.36 out of $5,000. Let's make it happen! Oh, 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 uh, hey! Oh. Oh. Good job, Jim. Yes. Jim learned from his past mistakes. This is usually the easier of the two minecarts. Very consistently, the second minecart goes much better. I think Jim has just gotten the practice done. Here's the best part. Oh, yeah. The oh. 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 Eat your heart out, Donkey Kong Country. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is also like a at least 12 frames per second. This is the fastest part of virtual hideout you're going to have outside of the menus. There we go. So this is to go pick up the fairy shield, complete our outfit, and the last thing we do need to do for 101%. 
Once again, thank you all for donating for that. It is amazing to see the generosity that comes in, especially for these adequately games done quick <laughs> here in this block. And uh, I think, can you tell us how we are doing on that Tree of the Pison setup? I know we're pushing for it really hard. Are we getting there, Lindsay? Oh yeah, we're getting we're getting closer. All right, um, then keep reading donations out until it happens. All right, we have a ten dollar donation from Bass Guitar Bill. The foolish speedrunner plays a game that needs frame perfect tricks. The wise speedrunner plays a game where every frame is perfect. <laughs> Virtual hide lied. <laughs> also, the dungeon just fills with poison randomly. It just does that. Another virtual hide lied thing. <laughs> We have a $60 donation from Cypher. I'm donating $60 during virtual hide lights. 60 times more than your current frame rate. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to AGDQ for putting on an awesome event every year. All right, we're making our way back out here. You know that the, uh, the game does have an in-game timer kept in that upper left-hand corner. It's quite accurate. That is what the time would be in uh, the world of virtual hide lights where none of this lag is taking place. <laughs> Usually the uh, good times I'm having uh, for a typical run, probably about uh, 22, 23 minutes in-game time and uh, in the low 40s for real time for that. Because we're going to do 101% though. We're going to be doing all the awesome stuff, which adds another about 10 minutes or so over the top. And I am glad that we get to show all of this off because virtual hide lied. It is a special treat that you really want to savor. Especially... Oh! oh. oh. <laughs> all right, Jim. We're going to go for the, the Kobe here. Okay. Hey. Hey. He almost clipped out of the minecart and then through the floor, which um, it doesn't soft lock the game, but it's really hard to get out of. So I'm glad that he did stay in there when it got uh, <laughs> the drop down for it. Oh. Oh. That's right. It jumps both ways. We go. Mine carts are now complete. We're going to make our way over to the mage here. We got another little bit of zigging and zagging through this dungeon. So let's get uh, maybe two more donations in here. And then I'll explain how the mage fight works when we get there. All right. We have a $15 donation from Lapras. Uh, could people in the background please move around a bit so my eyes don't get used to this frame right? Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, see, they're wiggling. Look, they're wiggling. We have a fifty dollar donation from Czar. Awful Block has been my favorite in the past three years. These games are art. <laughs> early detection and prevention saved my dad from prostate cancer. Get checked early and often, every single one of you. Lindsay did draw me a frame from Virtual Hide Light for our Poochie Limit Break, and it's just as realistic as the game, maybe even smoother. <laughs> All right, here we go, final floor here. So the way the mage fight's gonna work is I will be using the flame sword we picked up as part of the 101% uh, incentive. And it has an interesting side effect where instead of making Jim spin when you turn around, it makes the room spin instead. It's a uh, glitch due to the fact that it's got a, uh, a charge animation that they didn't actually program for uh, Jim moving at the same time. And since the mage fight is nothing but spinning in circles, it may make some of you dizzy, so yeah. just be on the lookout for that. I like to think of this as Jim working part-time as a sundial. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing is the mage is directly ripped off of Aghanim, so we're going to see how many blue balls that we get for this. Mm -hmm. um, and some words of wisdom, too. Yes, this mage also has some pithy quotes. He's thinking. Mm -hmm. Wait for it. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. All right, so you're supposed to chase this guy all around the room, which is a really big pain. So instead, I'm just going to let him circle. Oh, the fake out. There's blue ball number one. There we go. So you want him to just land, and that's really, really fast cycles so far. So this is no, fake out number two. So far, really good luck still with the cycle timing, but he can go for up to a minute. He also can sometimes just go out of bounds if he wants to. So we'll see how this goes overall. Nine total hits to take out the mage here. So we got a little bit of time for a donation or so as I work on this guy here. All right, we have a $256 donation from Vax Herd. Uh, does anyone know how to turn off Twitch Fast Forward? I know Virtual Highlight can't fit this many frames in a second. <laughs> Good luck surviving the run. Thank you very much, Vax Herd. There's also a 
than a debate in Jair's stream about what exactly the mage is doing right now, too. Is he shuffling cards? Is he Does he have his fingers caught in a Chinese finger trap? I mean, uh, I'm, I'm partial to the finger trap theory. I like yeah. cards shuffling. Those cards really, really shuffled right now. Nerf's they got fidgeting? number three. Back to the shuffling. He hasn't gone out of bounds yet, so we're we're not in the worst case scenario so far. This boss does in fact actually attack you if you let him land too, and it hurts. Yeah, he's got a, a two frame wind up, so I'm just letting it hit him in the the first of the, the frames when he's down on the ground. There we go. All right, Mage is down. We're gonna go ahead and get our pot. This game's got a lot of pot in it for some reason. <laughs> there we go. All right, so we get the Tears of the Earth. We get our fairy. And I'm going to go ahead and use the fairy tears here. This is the alternate way to warp back. This cost me 100,000 points, so I can't use it very often. But there's no easy way to death warp because there's no monsters around or environmental traps like we had the volcano. That's the quickest way to get back to the entrance of the dungeon. Otherwise, you're going all the way through all those elevators, all those mine carts again. And it's really important when you're doing the seed routing through here that you figure out routes that are going to have reasonably small dungeons. Um, this is a randomizer, and so the way it works is it pieces together um, like a dozen or so preset versions of each dungeon, maybe like a two dozen overworlds, and then random treasure chest placements inside for your seeds. And so I think the developers say there's something like three billion combinations, yes, you, you which allows to play, you, you have to play, to play the game over and over again. And I don't know why every would bit play of, more yeah, than once. Every yeah. bit of content the game has to offer takes three million playthroughs. I mean, truly, this game fits the term games as a service model. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to run up here to the Lost Castle, which is the last of the true dungeons that we go to. This is another one that probably should have remained lost. And it's got <laughs> two extremely awful mechanics in it. If you thought the stuff they had thought up for Virtual Highlight up to this point was bad, this is where they went a little bit experimental with how the game could go. And, uh, it was not a good experiment. It was a very, very bad idea, in fact, for most of us. This is probably our last chance in here for a good donation or two while I get this castle up and running. All right, we have a $15 donation from Mads. They say Virtual Highlight is currently the number two game on Twitch. <laughs> Woo! This run is performance art. We have a $500 donation from Scott Benson. Shout out to Virtual Highlight for actually giving me a headache watching it. <laughs> this game physically harmed me. Jim is all of our large son. This game is a land of contrast. <laughs> <laughs> we have a $50 donation from Dahel. I wanted to give $1 per frame of Virtual Highlight, but negative amounts are impossible. <laughs> all right, and so we're going to go into the Lost Castle here. So this is going to be part one. Uh, again, I told you that there is going to be two really bad ideas. The first bad idea they had was to do a teleporter maze. And the way they made this extra bad is it's a 3D teleporter maze. And I will show you guys what this looks like. So there is three floors <laughs> that look like this that are stacked on top of each other. The orange and pink dots, those are, tele those are like elevators up and down. So you need to get to the center of the third floor. Good luck if you have not got a set seat and you don't know where to go in here. This is probably where most people that really thought that they could handle Virtual Highlight are gonna pretty much up and quit. <laughs> There's two floors down up to floor three here, and one of the things I pick out for the seat is a relatively decent puzzle through here, which leads to the 3D moving block puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> This is also where the game sometimes will accidentally generate the wrong dungeon. And uh, <laughs> I did buy the text scroll so we could figure out which version we have. I got three relatively common ones where I know where a required item is. Let's see which one we get. Okay, this is going to be the Sword Light Plus Zero on the right-hand side. This is the second most common. Um, there's a slightly better one that gives you the Sword Light Plus Two, but the difference in damage is not too bad. And the reason this is the ideal one is because the stairs down are on the same side as the Sword of Light. If you don't have the Starlight, you can't actually finish the game. And there's nothing in the game that tells you that. Like a lot of the game's surprises, you just have to know how it works or experience getting soft-locked and realize that you have to start all the way from the beginning. 
because you missed one item. <laughs> the other thing I like about this area is it kind of pulses with the lighting effects, very similar to the original Doom, which I'm assuming it ripped that straight off of. It looks like there's lots of treasure chests here. These are actually 100 mimics and then like six real treasure chests on the floor. The mimics are the best part of the, uh, the game here because they have a status limit called Panic, where you lose control of gym for about 15 seconds and running around like an idiot. That's why I bought a bunch of mind potions earlier that will fix that status limit. I've never gotten panicked more than five times, but that is the, uh, the buffer I have to work with here. All right, there we go. On to floor two of this. No, not just one floor. There's another moving block puzzle we have to get through. Thankfully, we are done with item collection, though, so we're just going to make a quick dash to the other side here. That's not a good skeleton position. The uh, blocks are on a global timer, so I can't afford to do as many map turns here. Otherwise, they'll get out of cycle enough to wait for them to go usually about two or three loops around to get synced back up again. There we go, up and around, almost to the end of this where we have our boss, the extremely elicious life form, aka the eel for short. I don't know why they just capitalized all the letters in there, but I'm assuming it's an acronym. <laughs> all right, mimic right in front of me. Okay, Jim Spleen's okay. We got through it. I just want to say that this is a pretty awesome buzzing bass baseline here. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, the first time I heard this, I had to check my speakers to make sure they were okay. I think the volcano might have the best music, and there's nothing else to really do other than to listen to the music while you're going through there. All right, here we go. So another boss where you're only at range, but I'm using the fighter necklace to get triple shots now. This will speed up the boss. Suppose if we get a little bit closer, he's RNG about where he wants to stand, and I'm hoping that he moves pretty much in my face so that we can just shoot him over and over again. And it's a damage race. Will Jim make it? No, Jim's dead. <laughs> oh, no. That's okay. If you get to the menu on the first frame after death, <laughs> you can get back up. Yay! <laughs> Yay! Yeah. Now he goes up to the front. This is where I wanted him in the start and end. One more. All right, heal us down. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> It's not actually a one frame trick, you have three frames, which is like eight and a half seconds during the fight. So it's, <laughs> it's the freest thing you can do to uh, get through those boss fights. And now with all of the fairies in hand, we're gonna be whisked away to beautiful Viralis Castle, which is where we're gonna do our boss rush. Or most of a boss rush, they got halfway through the bosses and just gave up and said, here's the end boss. And that was a load bearing eel. It is a load bearing eel. Um, <laughs> now, if you don't have all three fairies, you just drown and uh, that's the end of the game there, and that is the biggest <laughs> word of all, taking us off to our next level here. I love you, crowd. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now for the boss rush, they did seriously buff these bosses. You do get to enjoy the voice acting one more time. Uh, by the way, the voice acting is just them playing the help text backwards in Japanese. Exactly. Now, what makes this guy tough is that he summons thousands of paralyzing bats that will just pummel Jim if he ever gets stun locked. And let's see, will we make it through here cleanly, or is Jim going to be kissing the floor over and over again? I think so far it's been going pretty good. The vampire gets close to me. That's usually when things go bad. And where is he? All right, staying back. This is great. And... Come on, bats. There we go. All right, we got him. Perfect fight there. Hmm. That one fight is the reason why I buy eight potions, and that is the most times that I have died in that battle. Um, you'll just get stun locked and murdered over and over again. It's like five or ten seconds per life that they just chew away. And now back to our pal, the mage. This time, though, I'm abusing a glitch with the uh, fighter necklace plus Sword of Light, which allows me to triple shot, and and it also has an interesting effect that it will do up to triple damage on the mage. It depends on your positioning for it, so you will often get doubles if you're at the wrong range, but triples are possible. And we'll see if we get a four cycle here. That was a double, so probably going to be a five cycle. It's a lot harder with a Sword of Light plus zero to do this anyway. That's another double. There's a little Goldilocks zone where you're not too close and not too far away for the triples. Let's try there. That was a pretty good one. you don't have this technique, you're gonna be doing another level. That's a triple. You can see how much damage it took off compared to a normal hit there, and possibly one more to go. Unless I really biff it and get a single. 
All right, he doesn't want to die. He, there he goes. All right. Where are you going, mage? Unlike the vampire, he doesn't resummon the skeletons unless he gets an attack off, so you're mostly safe. Ooh. And down. There we go. Now, I forgot to tell you there's three gems that we were supposed to collect. There is the amethyst in the graveyard, the ruby in the volcano, and the emerald in the uh, lost castle. And if you don't have them, Varaus is actually invincible. Unless you glitch through his invincibility shield, which is another thing that we can do with the fire necklace. The only downside is that when he teleports, he's going to be invisible. So I'm going to have to try and figure out where he goes. The ideal case is he just sits there on his throne and laughs at me. But uh, sometimes he goes on a little bit of a ride. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's just somebody belching into a microphone. Yeah. <laughs> Those are some good burps. And here we go. That's a good pose right there. Yes. Just stay there, Varalis. All right, there's the teleport. All right, Fireball's the only bad attack. You don't want to get hit by those. Everything else you can just tank to the face. Like that, that's no problem. Black Orb, no problem. And time! Woo! Woo! Now, of course, like most bosses, Rouse is going to be a load-bearing boss here, but we do have the amazing CG animation. This is where all of their budget <laughs> went in. The beautiful, beautiful there. And now Jim suddenly having lost quite a lot of weight since the last time we saw him. And also maybe his clothes and I think a contact lens is going to fall out here as well. Is going to be joyously reunited with <laughs> Princess Orb. <laughs> and that is going to be our amazing, amazing finale here. You're going to get a chance when we get to the stock photography to tell me whether there's going to be sheep or cow. But when we're going through here, I do want to give some quick shout outs here. Uh, my biggest shout out is to Feasel, who uh, unfortunately is off at a milkshake convention and was unable to be <laughs> on the couch here for virtual Hydelide. But Feasel's NES Hydelide, about eight years ago or so that he was playing it, was the only reason I know where to go in this game. Um, because there is no direction whatsoever about how to play virtual Hydelide. There we go. Are these sheep or cows? Uh, uh, rocks? Uh, Can they be rocks? <laughs> I'm hearing a lot of sheep. I'm going with sheep. <laughs> um, this is all stock for every... <laughs> the only people that are credited are the people that made the photography. So PPS, the supplier for photo, did an awesome job. Jim the princess, we have no idea who they are. And, uh, and it's better that way. It is probably better for them yeah. at least. <laughs> Any of you guys have some shout outs here before we wrap up? I just got one thing I want to ask, ask the audience. Can we get one big hide line? Hide line! <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you've seen the rest. Now, you've seen the best and of the awesome games. This was a game. game. This was a game. <laughs> Let's give it up for Jair! All right, so we're going to take a brief ad break. You're going to get to see some nice ads that have way more animation than that video game. So just sit tight for a bit, and we will be right back.
I'm OmniGamer, and I wrote my new book, Speedrun Science, to help newcomers and veterans alike through the full process of investigating, routing, and performing speedruns. I also introduced speedrunning's rich history, how its rules evolved, and a whole lot more. Pre-order now at Fangamer.com. We are back, and we have so many donation comments about Virtual Eye Live. We have a $10 donation from Royce the Voice. They say, just as a frame of reference, Thomas Edison's movies ran at about 16 frames per second. <laughs> we have a $50 donation from Sepp. A review of this Virtual Hide Live describes it as visually stunning. Can confirm, I am stunned. We have an anonymous $500 donation. Say, so why save the frames when they are so very precious? We have a $50 donation from Demon Fire. Virtual Highlights frame rate makes it the perfect candidate to be the first speed run recorded as a book instead of a video. <laughs> Speaking of all these great donations, we are now at 4,670. No, sorry. Oh, it changed on me just now. $4,698.05 out of 5,000 for W Fist Mode for Trio the Punch. We are so close. Let's get it in. Let's get Trio the Punch, W Fist Mode. This It is the most amazing thing you've ever seen in your life. You see Santo's giant weird fist coming at you, you get out the way, or else you will be reduced to a fine paste. All right, and so now we're going to turn it over to Jay Hobbs, who's going to interview Jire and PJ. Hello, everybody. My name is Jay Hobbs, and I am with PJ and Jire. Uh, Jire, first of all, congratulations on a fantastic virtual hide light run, I think. Thank you. I've been recovering <laughs> in the, the back here. I got some ice. I got some, some really strong medicine, yeah. and I think I'm ready to go for this. Yeah, we, we threw you right in the ice bath and everything, got you back out and ready to go. <laughs> the first thing I actually wanted to, to ask you was, uh, it, with a game that runs at, at such low FPS, you know, one frame per 20 seconds, <laughs> is, uh, is it actually easier or harder to do the frame-perfect tricks? do you find? <laughs> I find that the problem is that there are things that happen between frames. It's so like you're running down a hallway, there is a hole in there, but you never see it because you have a frame of a wall, you have a frame of a wall, and your turn was in the middle. So you have to actually get a, kind of get a sense about how things are. So it is very lenient in the sense that you're buffering all your inputs and there's like, it's virtual highlight. It doesn't really have things that you're worried about. But at the same time, it's more about memorization of what's coming and trying to make a, a smooth presentation there. So it's a very different style of game than something that, you know, like a, a platformer that's like super precise and you haven't hit all the tricks, it's a very, very fun experience, mm -hmm. but different in terms of the nature of it. Is, is Highlight a game that you basically just kind of pull out for the marathons and everything or just for having fun? Or is it something you're like, man, I got to reset every, every attempt, you know, almost because I got to get this perfect RNG or whatever. I first started out doing Highlight for Christmas as a way to punish everybody that got, you know, naughty over the year. Merry Christmas. That, <laughs> so, like, you know, this is your coal in the stock, and you get some virtual hide light. And then I realized, you know, I was actually optimizing and doing speed run oh, on no. it. And so <laughs> it came down from like an hour and a half to like 45 minutes to like, it was like 40 minutes by the time I did the RPG limit break run. <laughs> and so it just got to a point where it's actually a really fun speed run because I don't even have to look at the game. You know, it's, it doesn't, <laughs> doesn't show anything on the screen anyway. So you, 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 could, you could do a blindfolded incentive without even having to change anything. <laughs> I was just going to do the vampire, like, look it away like this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, man. I, I mean, I was loving it, every minute of it, of course. Uh, and PJ, I am also excited for your run because oh, yeah. <laughs> it runs at a lot more <laughs> FPS. Yeah, um, sure but that's does. not necessarily a good thing, right? Oh, it's the best thing. <laughs> Why don't you tell us a little bit about Mohawk, uh, All right. headphone jack? Uh, yes, yeah, so the Mohawk is a... Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a 2D. Let's let's say it's it's 2D Mario Galaxy mixed with Sonic the Hedgehog. That's probably the best way I could put it. It's a gravity-based platformer. <laughs> Got it. That's one to think on. <laughs> <laughs> Having seen the game, I actually do know what you're talking about. Though yeah. it's pretty cool. Um, now, with with the, the kind of the game. Shaky is not the right word, but with the game being kind of so wonky with the camera and everything because of the gravity and, and all that, mm -hmm. is 
like how how often are you just fighting yourself finding yourself uh fighting the physics of the game more than actually <laughs> trying to you know play it <laughs> uh so the game's controls are actually surprisingly good like if you were to watch the game it just it looks like you have absolutely no it looks like the exact time. opposite of that yeah. right right <laughs> um you get into some weird situations though where you're in like what i would call corner gravity so like this wall has gravity pointing this way and this wall has gravity pointing this way. When you're in that little scoop in between uh, and you jump like straight, straight up, <laughs> um, the game kind of tries to tear you in half because mm -hmm. it doesn't know what direction to send you. <laughs> So uh, that kind of situation is tough, <laughs> but the rest of it's fine. <laughs> the rest of it's pretty good, though. Yeah. Huh. All right. Well, we'll have to we'll have to see if you're actually accurate on that when we <laughs> when we come around to watching it. Uh, well, I want to jump into some social media questions because it's awful block. Everybody everybody loves it. Uh, and the the first one I love, and this really could apply to either one of you, I think, but maybe a little more for PJ, <laughs> is uh, from at Mr. Torture, who asked, "Do you take anything to avoid motion sickness?" No, fortunately, <laughs> I have never had that issue. Uh, even in the blind playthrough of Mohawk, it's it's always been okay. <laughs> and try or anything. I've had a couple of people tell me that they did get sick, especially in the volcano. So I do give that warning. Like it is a serious thing where people mm -hmm. are injured by it. But I find that like it doesn't affect me, and so I'm able to successfully make it through there most nights without dying. See, now we can fix this because we can get virtual hide light in VR. <laughs> oh, now we're talking. <laughs> and the, yeah, there we go. And I don't even want to touch Mohawk and headphone <laughs> jack no, in VR. No. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, thankfully, I think the technology is a, a little bit far away for that. Yeah, yeah, just just, just a little bit. Uh, I'm loving this one from at Henroid T, who asks, does speedrun.com accept <laughs> submissions of virtual hide light via family photo album? If you do have an immature album, we will check all the frames to make sure it was <laughs> yeah. I Can you stitch it together and make a GIF and submit it that way? Here's the thing. I believe you. I, I don't think you're lying. I bet you actually would. There are actually parts of Virtual High that run at 12 FPS. So those are the ones that are like the smooth parts. But it, it legitimately, it's just, it is a slideshow. And I think that is part of the charm for right. anybody yeah. that wants to pick it up. <laughs> okay, well, we have seen your run. And PJ, I want to give you kind of the last uh, question here. What is like the one moment in your run that people should be looking out for? Oh, dear. The end? The end. Just so it's, when it's done. The, like yeah. not, not, not the video, when it actually breaks yeah. to a different screen. Uh, yeah, joke answer and also real answer because the ending is amazing. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, it's a, it's a spectacle, for sure. All right. Well, remember, folks, you're not going to understand the end if you don't watch it from the <laughs> beginning. So, obviously, you got to check the whole thing out. Yeah, naturally. Right. And let's keep those donations coming in for Awful Block because every time you donate during the Awful Block, you are entered into a chance to win certain prizes. And there's generally a very familiar person who helps tell us about those prizes. Isn't that right, Sent? Oh, you don't say so. No, sorry, I'm trying to get here at, like, 8 FPS right now. <laughs> It's, it's very jarring. <laughs> well, Our, we're seeing you half out of frame, so that seems pretty appropriate. Yeah, yeah, right yeah no, I mean, that, that, that fits perfectly in with Awful Block. I love exactly. it. Exactly. Um, all right. So, Geyer, I, I have a question for you real quick. And I know Hobbs has been very polite in not asking it because I've seen it all over our social media. Why? <laughs> I was actually looking at YouTube videos like 10 years ago. And this was back when YouTube had a 10-minute time limit. Mm -hmm. And I got actually other games. Astel, which I ran in SDQ 2017, was another one. That was a good game that I found <laughs> on YouTube. This was one where it's just like, I got to try this. And <laughs> the reward was worth it. I, I cannot imagine how long this game takes in 10 minutes <laughs> even on YouTube. <laughs> that, that sounds awful. And speaking of awful, guys, we got some great prizes coming at you for Awful Block. Uh, everything we're going to talk about right now is open from now until the end of Trio the Punch, Never Forget Me, which is a game you should never forget mm. coming up later this morning. Uh, so first off, from our friends over at the Legends of Localization team, we have This Bui Book Bad Translation Video Game Words Are Hard. <laughs> Some, something like that. And guys, this is a wonderful little book full of all of your favorite linguistic missteps from like the NES, Genesis, uh, e even earlier era. You know, traditional stuff like all your base are belong to us and maybe even some a little more obscure things like you, invaders, get you the hot shotgun bullets to die. <laughs> what does it mean? I don't know. You don't know either, but you know what? You read this book, you're going to find out. Uh, so huge shout outs to them. Uh, now, from our friend Iggy Ziggy, we have a poster. I don't know where he got this poster. I don't want to know where he got this poster. But it is a poster oh, yes. of oh, Santos. Oh. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Never forget him. $5 minimum donation. Get, get your donations in if you want this or if you don't. <laughs> Either way. I don't blame you. I, I'm just going to hold this for the rest of the interview because this is just fantastic. It as, is and it, No one needs to see me. As, as you should. Um, oh. 
this prize is so awful, it tried to escape from us. I had to just go <laughs> reach down the back of the couch to get it. <laughs> um, but from SGDQ, we have Uyama's signed Commissioner Uyama speech. Now, here's a, here's a quick story about this. Hobbs, I know you were in on this one, but mm -hmm. at the end of SGDQ, we did a fun little skit involving a character we like called, uh, called Prize Man. Mm -hmm. And we had uh, him, you know, fight the evil Commissioner Uyama. And I told Mike at the time, you know, Mike, all you have to do is, like, sit at the desk, pretend to do some work, say some vaguely evil lines, and then, uh, you know, we'll, we'll ad-lib it from there. It's fine. Mike goes, and he writes down this full cue card full of, like, <laughs> instructions and lines and everything involved, and then signs it, the Commissioner Uyama. <laughs> so we thought it'd be, it'd be really cute, you know, for Awful Block. Let, let's put it in as a prize. $10 minimum donation. We'll have, we're going to have the whole, like, production team sign it. And it's it, not framed yet, but I believe it's it, going it to be framed. It will be framed, right? yes. And, I mean, this is genuinely one-of-a-kind GDQ <laughs> memorabilia. <laughs> this will never be made again for many reasons, most of them good. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, finally, Hobbs, right behind you on the shelf there, we have a, a Winner is oh, You cross-stitch. i got to move the poster. Don't yeah, yeah. <laughs> why, why don't we hand it to PJ? Nothing could go wrong with that, I'm sure. <laughs> um, yeah, right, right behind you there, Hobbs. Beautiful A Winner is You cross-stitch from our friend Skater43. Um, you know, it, it truly exemplifies everything important about Awful Block, from shirtless men to terrible grammar. Everything you need is right there. $10 minimum donation from now until the end of Trio the Punch. Guys, don't forget, every donation you get in brings you one step closer to getting in on our wonderful grand prize guy. If you want to you motion with me here. This, uh, this amazing, ah, oh, oh, yeah. It's amazing. Excellent motion. Excellent motion, guy. This amazing uh, Hylian Shield and Master Sword. They're one to one replicas of the uh, Hylian Shield and Master Sword from Breath of the Wild, sent to us by our good friends over at Heroic Replicas. Super awesome. It's a $250 minimum donation um, throughout the marathon, but hey, it's cumulative. So again, a couple dollars here, a couple dollars there. Before <laughs> you know it, you're in to win it. Um, and anyway, Hobbs, you know, I think that's going to be it for us. Guys, I think we are just about uh, ready to meet our WFIST incentive if we haven't already met it. Oh, yeah. We, we got to make that push. You guys, you guys want to see this. I know it doesn't look like it, but you want, <laughs> you to, want to see, see this. this. I'm yeah. pretty sure precisely because it doesn't look like you want to see it is why they want to exactly. see it. Exactly. Yeah. But what they don't understand is how many people are just going to be doing hoo yeah, you can't, you can't see my hand. Don't worry about it. It's fine. It's funny. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, I think that's going to be about it for us. Hobbs, thank you so much for having me here to show off these prizes as always. Yeah, thank you, Sent. And let's go ahead and throw it back up to the front because we got Pete Dorr, who is just about ready to start Urban Yeti. I, is Spike in the house? I feel like he's got to be for this one. <laughs> he's, he's somewhere around here, I'm sure. <laughs> throw it back up to the LLK. Thanks, folks. We have a $10 donation from Jager Mins. I think I could draw...